Hi, I'm a student nurse at MCC. Uh, my name is Drew Sikama. I'm going to be doing your physical assessment today. Is that all right with you? Yes, sir. I'm going to wash my hands and I'll screen for privacy, close the door. Um, I'm just going to start out by asking you a couple basic questions uh, just to assess your basic neurological status. Um, can you tell me your name and date of birth? Uh, Craig Cutchin, October 26, 2007. Okay, and then do you know what day it is today? Uh, July 3rd. And do you know where you are? Okay, so the patient is ANO times four, so the neurological status is intact. Um, so the patient's height and weight are uh, 5'11 uh, for the height, and then for the uh, weight is 210. Uh, that puts him in the 75th percentile for height and the 95th percentile for weight. Um, so his basic vitals for a kid this age, uh, his heart rate should be between 60 and 100. Uh, when we did his, it was at 72. Um, for his respiratory, his respirations, uh, between for a minute, it should be between 12 and 20. His are at 17, so within normal limits. Uh, blood pressure, uh, systolic for this is gonna be roughly like 130 to 110-ish, and then three to about 63 and his was resting at about 115 over 78. So that's, again, within defined limits. Um, temperature, that's gonna be around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, when we took his temperature, it was 98.8, so pretty close. Um, and then for O2 status, oxygen in his blood, it should be above 95. Um, I didn't have a blood pressure cuff or an, op, an O2 monitor, but I'm assuming he's in the normal range because he's a healthy young lad. Um, the patient's appearance. Uh, so he's dressed for the occasion, uh, not smelling any bad odors coming off him. Uh, he answered all the questions normally, so I don't think anything's going wrong there. Um, so for the physical part of this assessment, I'm just gonna start from top to bottom. So I'm gonna start by looking at your head. You can stay sitting if you want. Um, and then I'll go and look at your eyes, your nose, your ears, your mouth, all that stuff. Uh, so we'll start with your hair. Um, you could use gloves for this, but I know that I don't need them for this patient. Um, hair texture is soft and clean. I don't see any evidence of lice or any other bugs or parasites. No scabbing or bruising. Um, if it was an infant, you could check for fontanelles. Uh, Craig is 15 years old, so he's his is going to be closed up by now. Um, but everything looks within the fine limits here. So we'll move on to his face. So it looks symmetrical. Both the eyes are sitting at the, about the top of the ear, which is where they should be. The nose is in line with the rest of the face. Um, can you breathe well out of your nose? Can you yep. go in and out? They both feel clear? Yep. Okay. Uh, I don't see any drainage coming out of the eyes or the nose or the ears. Um, could you go like that so I can see under your eye? Uh, sclera, conjunctiva, um, cornea, irises all look good. Uh, eyes aren't bloodshot, nice and white and pink. Right. I'm just gonna check inside your ears and then in your nose and your mouth. So I don't see any drainage, uh, no wax, no cuts, bumps, no swelling. I don't feel any swelling of lymph nodes. Um, other ear, we got no swelling, no cuts. I don't see any drainage or wax. No swollen lymph nodes. Um, I'm just gonna check your eyes real quick. So we're gonna check. Oh, you're good. You can just. Yep. So I'm gonna shine uh, the light in one of your eyes, and they should shrink. Yep. And the other one shrink with it. Good. So they're reactive. Round, reactive to light. Um, oh, I gotta do the mouth. Could you say off for me? Uh, mouth looks clean. Got a moist pink. Um, I don't see any redness or cuts. 
good oral hygiene. Do you mind moving your lips up and down? Like, yep, so I can see your teeth. Okay, looks like he's got good hygiene. I don't see any problems here. Doesn't look like he's got any cavities. Um, so yeah. All right, could you lean your head back for me? I'm just gonna look up your nose too. Again, I don't see any drainage. I don't see any leaking, any cuts in there. Um, keep your head like that. Yep, I'm gonna look at your neck now. Uh, so trachea is positioned down the midline, so that's good. Could you swallow for me? Good. So swallow reflex is intact. Uh, you could, in a normal doctor's office, you could stimulate the gag reflex. Um, I'm not gonna do that just because it's kind of invasive to the patient. Um, but again, I don't feel any swelling of any lymph nodes, so everything seems good there. Again, let me know if anything causes you any discomfort as well. Um, so from there we can go to skin. So you, if you want to just hold your arms out for me, uh, again on the face too. So the skin looks clear. I don't see any blemishes, no cuts or bumps or major bruises. Um, I do know that this is a pretty active kid, so seeing something like that wouldn't be crazy out of the ordinary. Um, but he's all good, so I don't I don't see any. Fingernails look good. Um, cat refill is good. It's coming back. Uh, skin trigger snaps right back into place perfect other hand again nails look fine uh, you can see the pinkness of them uh, they're trimmed up nicely not too long and again cap refill is good okay so now that the skin is over we're gonna do um, some range of motion stuff just to test your musculoskeletal stuff so if you want to stand up for me um, then if you want to just uh, Put your hands to your shoulders and put them down. You can cross them like that, go like that. Can you raise them up above your head? Go back down. Um, okay, so now we can move on to the lungs. Can you take that one off? Nice. I, think, I thought you had to actually unbutton it. Okay, so now we'll take a listen to his lungs. Uh, we're gonna start at the apex of the lungs, uh, so the top. So you can kind of see right off the clavicle here, it's gonna be like a third of the way down. That's about where the top of the lungs rest. Uh, going downwards, about T6, T7, um, I guess for the spine, but uh, about the seventh or eighth rib is where the base of the lungs sit. So I'm gonna have Craig uh, lay down here and then I'll listen to those. And then we'll hit the back too. You lay on front or back? I'll lay down on your back. So Craig, each time that I listen to your lungs, I'm just gonna place my stethoscope down. And then each time I place it down, you can just breathe in and breathe out. And then I'm just gonna do a couple spots down. And I'll just be listening for any crackling, wheezing, uh, anything out of the ordinary. So let's start that right now. All right. I'm gonna go under your shirt too, is that all right? Yep. All right. You do a big deep breath. Very good. One more. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna reach up under your shirt, is that all right with you? Lungs sound clear, uh, free of any wheezing or anything like that. Or you can sit up now. Um, so it sounds, it's, uh, the lungs sound good. Um, so again, for the back, uh, we're gonna listen to the lungs at the back. Sometimes it's a little bit easier than hearing it through the front just because there's less to go through. Um, so we're gonna be starting up at the apex again. Uh, so right by the scapula. And then if you go down to T10, that's where like, the base sits. So again, uh, every time I place it and set it back down, just take a big deep breath for me.
it hear any wheezing or crackling? Uh, it's a pretty common uh, to hear like the crackling in like the lower um, base of the lungs and the back side. And I didn't hear any of that, so it checks out. And so for the lung sounds when you're hearing them, so when the air comes in, you're gonna hear the bronchial sounds uh, right through here, like where the bronchial is. Um, the vascular sounds are gonna be heard like more in the, um, like where it gets smaller and it goes into the alveoli. Um, and then the bronchovascular sounds is where it comes out of the bronchial into the vascular area. You can kind of hear uh, a mixture of both of them right through there. All right, now we're gonna take a listen to his heart. Uh, so we're gonna listen to a total of four different landmarks here. So we're gonna start with the aortic, which is in the second intercostal space. Uh, so the second like rib uh, space in between ribs. Uh, and then we have the pulmonic, uh, again on the opposite side uh, on the second intercostal space. Uh, and then we have herbs point, which is in the middle. And then we have the tricuspid and mitral areas. Um, so we're gonna listen to all of those and then we'll take an apical pulse at the mitral for a minute. And that should be about the same as his heart rate. All right, again, uh, just breathe normally. I'll just be doing my thing. I'll just go over here, sure. <laughs> just breathe normally. Your heart sounds good. Um, it's me, it's strong. Uh, and again, so you hear S2 at these top points and you hear the S1 at the bottom points. Uh, herbs point is in the middle and that's where you can hear S2 and S1. So the love dub. Okay, so now that we have listened to the heart, I'm gonna go back and listen to the apical pulse for a minute. got 75 for that so about the same as his heart rate uh, when I checked it earlier uh, okay so now we'll move on to the um, like the bowels and the bladder and stuff so if you want to lay down on your back right here okay um, so you mind if I pull your shirt up a little bit just right over your belly Okay, so everything looks normal. Skin again, uh, no blemishes, no cuts, bruises, nothing like that. Uh, I don't see any excessive like bloating or anything like that. Um, do you have any discomfort before I begin or anything? No? Okay, so I'll listen before I um, palpate it.
right, so his bowels are active in all four quadrants, um, which is good, suggesting he's got food in him that's being digested. Um, so now I'll go ahead and I'll palpate. So is it alright if I just press into you a little bit? Uh, I'm just feeling for any like hard lumps or masses that might um, mean something bad. Uh, and then I'm also going to press down on your bladder, which might like make you have to like pee a little. So just the heads up. Any pain or discomfort? I don't feel any hard lumps or masses, so I think it's all good. All right, so you can sit up now if you want. Uh, so now we're gonna move on to the reproductive slash like genitalia portion of this. So it's just gonna be a talk because we're not in the hospital setting and stuff. So it's just important to about like once a week, like maybe after you take a shower or something, uh, to just give yourself like an examination, just feeling for any lumps, hard, uh, masses on either of your testicles just making sure that nothing seems out of the ordinary and then if it is you know go to the doctor get it checked out um, and then with uh, hygiene care down there just shower regularly make sure you're wiping um, front to back uh, which is more important for women but, uh, but yeah so that's about it for that one Okay, so now that that's over, we can move on to the... Uh, we'll do your musculoskeletal, so we'll start with your lower extremities. Um, if Could you just extend and then... And then just We're just looking for um, just mobility to see if you can do it, so the other one. Okay, and then can you roll your ankles around in a circle? Okay, good. Uh, could you do it with your hands too? We'll test that as well. Okay, can you go like that with your fingers? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, you want to stand up for me? All right, can you balance on one leg? Very good. You do the other one? Awesome. Okay, um, now we'll do your spine to check for any scoliosis or lordosis or kyphosis. So if you want, you can just uh, bend over and touch your toes. Or just get as close as you can. I'll check your spine alignment. Okay, look straight. Um, and then if you could just twist for me like that. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll do your neck too while you're standing. You can just go up all the way back the sides yep doing great um all right uh can you have a seat for me and you want to pop off those socks yep. i'm just going to be looking again for cap refill fill and then just some hygiene stuff mm. okay mm -hmm. so again the nails are nice and closely trimmed um they look pink and dry i don't see any cuts or bruises or bumps. Um, cap refill is good. It's refilling with the normal three seconds. Uh, I don't feel any edema or anything like that going on. No swelling in the ankles or anything. Um, could you could you lean back a little bit so your feet are hanging off the edge? Okay, so we're just going to do some push and pulls. Uh, you can lean forward a little bit so I'm just gonna grab your foot can you push like you're driving a car like push it down both of them and then pull pull up yeah perfect and then can you grab my fingers squeeze them and then pull me push me okay equal bilateral bilaterally so push and pulls are equal all right Craig and that's about all I've got for you for this assessment do you have any questions for me nope Okay, so we'll see you again next year for your physical. After reviewing the video, uh, at the end, I realized I forgot a couple things. Um, I meant to test the patient's language and speech pattern. I had a piece of paper with a written message on it for him to read. Uh, I just forgot to give it to him. Uh, I didn't do a super good job examining all the lymph nodes. Uh, I did press them all however I didn't like make a note of certain ones um, 
I also left out the whisper test. I meant to do that as well when I was assessing the patient's ears. Um, also, when I was listening to the patient's uh, lungs uh, and heart, I could have had the patient take his shirt off uh, or go under it, uh, but with circumstances just made more sense not to. Um, when I did listen to the patient's lungs, uh, he laid down on his back and he could have been sitting up. Um, he just naturally laid down and I just let it happen. Um, my patient also was at fair this weekend. So we were in a camper, which was kind of cramped and a lot of people were coming in and out. So that was also a distraction. But other than that, I think I hit everything pretty well.